Hello YouTube, um, back again. This is another reference video that I'll be pointing back to. Um, the reason for this reference video is <clears throat> the difference between a controller, which is analog, and a mouse, which is digital. Um, I see people saying all the time, well, it's possible to do this, it's possible to do that. And I'm looking at it and I'm analyzing it. I'm like, that's, that's not true, that's not possible. It's actually impossible. And it's because of the physics, the way these devices are made, that makes it impossible. So let's get into it. All right. So on your right, my right? Yeah, something like that, but I'm pointing left. Anyway, so up here, you're, uh, you're going to see uh, one for mouse. And then uh, over here. On the other side of the other camera, you're going to see a controller. And you see that movement right there. All right. So the deal is, I want to make sure my audio is recording. Um, yeah, it's recording. All right. So I still sound annoying. Anyway, so <clears throat> over here, we have a mouse. And a mouse is a digital device. So digital means it reads open and close. So whereas a controller over here, um, it has a spatial position. Um, in short, uh, the, the term for spatial position would mean that if you hold, if you hold the controller at a certain point, it will continue reading that value as you were doing something until you return it back. So you're going to keep turning right until you let go. Whereas on a mouse. If you take the mouse and you move it, as soon as you stop, your player stops. You, there's no return to zero. It's just open and close. So this is digital. This is analog. Now, the reason why I need to bring this up is I see people saying, oh, you can do, uh, this person has great flick shots and are on controller. I'm not saying it is impossible to do a flick shot on controller. I am saying it is extremely difficult unless you have very, very good thumb movement as well as hand-eye coordination. The reason why I say that, I get this on camera here, is unless you can go through, let's say the person is uh, like a diagonal from you, unless you can make a perfect, smooth, linear diagonal movement, it's impossible because look at all those number readings. So unless you can make a perfect movement, it is impossible. The other reason, and I'll see instances, and I'll use this as a reference in the future, I'll see instances where in two or three frames, a person on a controller in two or three frames is snapping up to an item or a person and snapping back on a controller, and it's impossible. Because if you look at the values, there's, as you push over, there's a ramp up value that it's reading, and then as you're returning back to center, there's a slowdown. And that's the reason why you have aim assist in the game, is that when you move that controller to move up and to come back, you're moving over to, over to a target as fast as you can, and then you're trying to get onto that target, you want to be able to stop and pull the brakes on that control as fast as possible. So aim assist is designed almost like a braking mechanism to say, hey, slow down, you're almost on target, so as well as the application helping you slow down, you're slowing down as you get the thumbstick back to, to, to zero position. Um, to whereas with mouse, it's easier to make a linear movement. Um, there's a chance for an overshoot. This is gonna give a far greater chance for overshoot because it doesn't slow down fast enough. Um, but you're gonna be able to make movements like it will it just reads position, open and close. So it, there's no takeoff speed and slow down speed aside from your hand. So however fast you can accelerate and that sensor, however good a mouse you have, as fast as that sensor can pick up that reading is as fast as it'll go through and it'll read that movement. It, it's, the movement is more linear, it's more flat line, and it, it's, not like, it's not like a controller. So on a controller, it's, uh, it's like a sine wave. 
So if you move to, once you move out, left, right, whatever, and you come back to zero, it's, it's a curve. But if you move too far and you let it slap back, it's like a sine wave. So it's a curve and a dip. And if you have that, while player's looking, if you force it over and then you let it slap back to zero to stop it as fast as possible, you're going to get a jolt back in the direction you just came from. And a lot of times when you see these where they go from one point to another in our controller player, it's like a hard break. That is impossible. Um, on control or on mouse, it's easier to do that, but you're still not always going to be able to get it to land precisely where you want it to, but you're going to get closer than you would with the controller. So in the game, the reason for the aim assist, if you read all the settings, standard, uh, precision, and there's one other, they, uh, they all say slow down. The reason why they say slow down is because it's, it's almost like a, uh, a pool effect. So if you aim too far, it, it feels like it's pulling it some. It's not. What it is is it's slowing it down so that you don't go too far. So there's a little bit of a resistance between the person on the controller and the actual game application. Um, to whereas on mouse and keyboard, there's no aim assistance. Uh, on controller, you can disable aim assistance, but for a lot of the people that are using these cheat applications, it says in the settings for best use to use standard as their aim assistance. And the reason being is the amount of pull that standard gives over the others allows to kind of help mask uh, the use of these uh, aim bots. Um, so anyway, this video is just a reference video to uh, kind of talk about the difference in uh, movement and, uh, and how it's impossible to make a flat linear movement within like two or three frames on a controller uh, versus a mouse. A mouse you can, but you're, you're not going to hit like every single time. You're not going to be landing center mass. You're not going to be landing right on the head. You're going to get close to the hitbox and make a register. Chances are you're going to be able to hit, to hit headshots like Doc Disrespect. Um, I've reviewed a lot of his footage and, and yeah, he's got a pretty good, uh, pretty good eye hand coordination, um, going on. Um, but he's not always center mass when he does a headshot. If you slow it down frame by frame, um, he's usually off one side or the other when he makes the shot. Uh, yeah, so that's all in this video. Um, I'll have more of these to come. Deuces.